Well, there's a lot to get through this week with RF transceivers, Bluetooth, LoRa, oh, there's always LoRa, test kits, and only one SBC. That's sad. Starting from this week, I'll be dropping some product areas from my weekly roundup so I can focus more on electronics. So things like 3D printers, drones and robots that have no real hacking value but are interesting anyway will end up in a section just on my website. So check that out. If you own one of the DE0 Nanos, which is an FPGA development board, there's a new Kickstarter that provides an adapter to connect up a Raspberry Pi. Combined with the small prototyping area, it allows you to easily program the Altera Cyclone 4 FPGA and gives you access to a lot more GPIO options, state machines and everything else that the FPGA provides. PFX Brick is yet another product in the long line of modular STEM products, but this one aims to push all the components into a standard LEGO brick format. Not only that, but it is compatible with a wide range of LEGO power function accessories. It contains an IR sensor, two motor driver outputs, lighting connector, audio out, all running from 5 to 12 volts DC. There's no RF radio, so everything is controlled from USB via the PFX application. A fairly complete package, but shame there's no OTA programming. Amy CS is an alternative OS for your Pi based on FreeBSD and contains a desktop environment, a bunch of tools like graphics and sound editors, sequencer and a complete JavaScript IDE. This package comes as a PC application that will write everything you need to an SD card for a quick start. If you're into making fancy demo graphics or retro games, then this looks pretty good. Speaking of games, there's the Maker Bueno, which is a DIY kit allowing you to make your own game console. It's based on the Atmega328, but also has a Nokia 5110 LCD, SD slot, LiPo battery management, audio out, and a bunch of buttons. Looks pretty cool. The EDOT Core is another through-hole plated PCB containing an Atmega328, DS3231 RTC, USB, and pushes out all the GPIOs from the Atmega can be powered from 12 volts DC. There's a couple of things on crowd supply. The Nubi went live last week, which is a small NAS box based on the MediaTek MT7621A, overclocked to 1.2 gigahertz. Contains 512 megs DDR3, SD slot, two one gigabit ethernet, USB 3.0 and USB 2.0 ports, and six SATA ports. Nice. The MediaTek, of course, runs any of the Linux distros, but with Debian, OpenMediaVault, Lidi, and Libra CMC being listed. This is a pretty nice unit, but seems to not be attracting much interest. Shame. The Aeroscope is yet another campaign that went live recently. It's a Bluetooth scope capable of 100 mega samples per second at plus or minus 40 volts with 100 millivolts to 10 volt ranges. The onboard LiPo gives you eight hours of measuring happiness. This is one of those ideas that comes around every so often that is so obvious, but no one has made a product out of it yet. I'll be backing this one as it's something that is just too darn useful. The Neo segment is in pre-launch, which seems to be a NeoPixel based seven segment display, but nothing much else about it. And another in pre-launch, which is a small eight x eight RGB LED panel based on the APA 102C LEDs. They can be stacked and connected without cables or soldering looks interesting. This embedded NUC based board will be hitting the shell soon. It's based on the Snapdragon 410E SOC with 2 gigs DDR3, DisplayPort, LVDS, 2 lane and 4 lane MIPI CSI, EMMC, SD, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, USB 2.0, 100 megabit Ethernet and the full complement of GPIOs. All running off a 12 volt DC supply. No info yet on the release date for this one. Tinti has gone mad with products this week. This board contains two LSM9DS1 IMUs, the theory being you can reduce sensor drift better and provide more accurate positioning, supports the Adafruit and SparkFun libraries. Hey, now this one looks familiar. It's very similar to the Maker Bueno Kickstarter I mentioned earlier. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's identical. If you're a hammy, then this one might interest you. It's a small 5 volt regulator designed to connect to a power distribution block. There's also this 5 watt 16 channel UHF walkie talkie transceiver controlled via USB. All this 5 watt digital mobile radio working in the 400 to 470 megahertz frequencies, running off 12 volts DC. 
Then there's this analog video transmitter hat for the Raspberry Pi, capable of 640 by 360 at 30 frames per second, using the Scilab's 3363 RF transceiver. Now that's pretty unusual. This is a simple board that breaks out everything from your RFM95 module, just the thing for breadboarding. If you're a fan of the STM32, then there is a new revision of the previous Sushi Bits, which contains several upgraded versions of the STM32 MCU, as well as RTC, USB to TTL, and a switch mode power supply for ultra low power. There are a number of new flex modules on Tindy, such as the digital potentiometer, based on the microchip MCP4461T. That's controlled via ITC and is capable of handling up to 12 volts. Or a cardioid MEMS module that contains two ST Micro MP34 DB01 chips designed to allow directional noise cancelling. Both microphones are accessible via SPI. The CDM324 is a microwave Doppler speed sensor and comes in handy in many situations. This one runs off a 5 volt supply and pretty tiny so you can chuck it almost anywhere. If you want to be able to control a bunch of RGB LEDs from your Pi, then this simple board will do the trick. RP Uno is expensive, but is designed for solar powered applications. Contains an Atmega328 LT3652 solar charge controller, battery current and voltage sensing, and mounting points for a DIN rail system. The ULP Weather Logger is an ESP8266 based board with temperature, humidity, pressure, and light sensors. It can run for six months on two 2.4 amp hour nickel metal hydride batteries by shutting down to a 20 nano amp sleep state and waking up every hour. Over at Adafruit, there's a feather containing the NRF5283 Bluetooth module, which runs the ARM Cortex M4F and, like all the feathers, has LiPo battery management. They also have the IBM TJ Bot in coming soon status, but SparkFun seem to have them in stock at the moment. The TJ Bot is a small DIY robot designed by IBM that is certainly a lot cheaper than anything you'd find on Kickstarter. It's a laser cut cardboard box with servos, speakers, microphone, and Raspberry Pi 3 with 16 gig noobs SD card. Pretty good little learning product. Another STEM product is a micro bit, which is in one of my earlier roundups, but now you can get it from SparkFun. It contains a Cortex M0 MCU, 5x5 LED array, 9 DOF IMU, light and temperature sensors, and LiPo battery support. Pololo have a pretty neat step up, step down regulator based on the S9V11F5, which will provide a stable 5 volts at 1.5 amps from 2 to 16 volt input, but in reality won't start up unless there's at least 3 volts. Over on the cheap side, we have a Pi expansion board providing LiPo battery management that can act like a UPS. It can power your Pi from the GPIO header or via USB port. This is the basic kit, and this one provides all the cables and headers. This board provides a 100 megabit Ethernet interface that is accessible over SPI. And similar to the pack from last week, this one contains 37 sensors, buttons, LEDs, and other stuff, all of which would cost more if bought individually. And this one contains 45 different boards. IC Station have a bunch of small motors and actuators just in, such as this micro-stepping push rod, or this linear screw stepper, or you can get 10 of these tiny ones for just a dollar. They also have a CH9121 breakout, which is a handy Ethernet to UART chip capable of up to 921,600 board rate. Sadly, there's no POE on board, which would make this infinitely more useful. Also, it seems there's only one UART made available, where this chip can handle up to four. Another board just in is the CC2640F128 Bluetooth module, which contains a Cortex-M3 running at 48 MHz, supports OTA programming, and has broken out the JTAG and SWD debugging pins along with all the 31 GPIOs. Don't forget, if you're ordering stuff from IC Station or Banggood, you can support me by using my affiliate code, which is in the description below or on my website. Anyway, that about wraps up this extended version of the router. Thanks for watching and see you next week.